Hey everyone, just wanted to give a quick recap here for those of you who didn't see part one. I was having symptoms in the van related to electrical issues, which it was random gauges and lights on the instrument cluster flickering. The wait to start would not go all the way through, so since it's a diesel, I do have to wait for that process to end before I can start it. It would randomly die at intersections or when trying to roll up a window. So it was clearly an electrical issue. I did end up finding out what it was and we'll show you how right here in this video. So when you're looking for this part, it's actually located down in off the corner of the battery here. And there's like that crown that you can kind of see there, but you will have to pull out the battery in order to reach that so that is something that has to come out I did pull the uh, battery mount um, case just to make it a little bit easier and just I wanted to see if it was chafing here too which it wasn't um, it is pretty well covered with conduit so I just retaped that and then I'll bolt this back in it's just the two bolts here that line up through some uh, WD-40 on them. They did come out a bit rough, so I want to make sure those don't rust back in. On the starter solenoid to take these off of the main terminals. It's a 14 mil, and it's pretty easy to reach back in there to get those off. Um, I just used a socket wrench with a 14 millimeter, and you can see how this one's pretty gummed up from like melted insulation and stuff so it would lead me to believe that that side was really loose and things got way too hot so it's a very good chance that that's what's causing the shorting on the starting and hopefully everything else down the line so I removed all the wiring that was connected to the uh, starter solenoid a lot of it you can tell was damaged and had a loose connection because there's a lot of like metal and just bad bare spots on it where you can tell just crap mounted up so I cleaned all these ring terminals and you know you can tell there was high heat here from there not being a good connection it actually melted a lot of these pieces here so I went through cleaned all these ring terminals as best as I could um, and then we'll take off the starter solenoid here. To remove this, there's two bolts. There's one here, there's one up on the top. You're going to have to take off these grounds off of this, uh, chassis mount here to get to this one effectively. So, unfortunately, it's just something you're going to have to do. It's really hard to reach back in there with the wrench and get the leverage that you need without getting this guy out of the way so here's that ground and this this side screws into the actual chassis and then <clears throat> this side is just stagnant for when you put the other nut on here to attach this second single cable ground this is a double cable ground here that goes on the back side um, actually attaching it to the chassis and I'm going to clean those two up just to make sure I've got a good ground connection. So for this top one, I just put an extension on. It's the 8 mil, and you can kind of get past everything here. I did pull off that ground terminal there. don't necessarily need to do that. It'll just make it easier for access to get everything hooked back up. So here's the starter solenoid. Once I pull it out, you can see the one side's got a bunch of melted insulation. Plus... So we put it on last, cross-threaded it, and that prong is bent pretty bad. It's like a $17 part from AutoZone, so I'm just going to go pick one of those up. Okay, so here's the replacement. This one has two prongs because it's a Duralast, but you just put the, uh, the lead to the starter on that S1. Negative one isn't used because that isn't there. So, $17 bucks at AutoZone, not too bad kind of wish I had the Motorcraft one but this one should be fine so we'll get this put in and everything back hooked up 
So to put the ground back on, you do need a deep socket. Uh, 7 16 is what I use to get that tightened. Put this with the two wires in on the bottom, and then it'll be the uh, single ground here that goes on the top with the nut on the top of that. All right, got the grounds back hooked up, so now to reconnect everything to the starter solenoid. Okay, now I got them both back on. The two yellow wires that come uh, above and below, one that does feed the power distribution box. This one goes back into the engine, the power to the starter, which would make sense. So these ones came with uh, lock washers, which is probably good. The last one didn't have those on there, and it did seem loose, so this should help with that. Got those tightened down, and the last thing to do is to connect the signal wire. And that just goes on the top right back behind here. All right, so when everything was back in place, went to start the van, everything started up great. I even noticed things as much as the radio being more powerful. I was having issues where there was lines in the screen of my backup camera. It was all because all of the main power going into the distribution box and to the starter was loose. So therefore you're going to have issues all the way down the line. It was only getting worse because I'm sure that not only got more loose and was just probably even in danger of frying, you know, something down the line, either the wire or the distribution box, which I can't even imagine how much that would cost. So glad I finally figured it out. I hope this helps you if you're having these similar issues. If you have questions, if you have symptoms that you're you're running into, you know, I may have had them too. It was just so intermittent. I couldn't even capture them all on video. So it was just a matter of finally narrowing it down to this part, getting it fixed for actually very cheap. And, you know, maybe I did the shift lever without necessarily having to do it but since it is a common issue i am glad that it's done i do have the old one still if i do want to you know put that back in but i'm just going to keep the new one and uh you know i'm just glad it's all worked out it's been fixed for a while now i've had no real issues so thanks for watching uh, if you like this kind of stuff you know please consider subscribing give me a like and put a comment down in the comment section if you've got any questions or comments thanks and we'll see you on the next one